Welcome to A Line Through Time, where I take the time to look through your favourite franchises and work out how it all lines up. Yeah, I'm going solo again, even though I'm covering two franchises in this one. Hmm. See, both of Namco's big fighting franchises are implied to be set in the same universe. What? No, well, maybe, but no, Tekken and Soul Calibur. Don't worry, I'll explain as we progress. In December 1994, Namco released the arcade fighting game Tekken. Directed by Virtua Fighter designer Seichi Ishii, the game's premise is very standard fighting game fur, but with a twist to add more of an interesting arc. Our hero, Kazuya Mishima, was thrown off a cliff when he was five by his father, Heihachi, head of the powerful Mishima Zaibatsu. Kazuya made a deal with the devil to obtain power so he could seek revenge. 21 years later, Kazuya returns to compete in Heihachi's King of Iron Fist martial arts tournament. The two face off in the tournament's climax on the very same cliff from which Kazuya was thrown. Upon winning the battle, Kazuya throws his father off the cliff and takes over the company. The game proved successful and had a sequel released in under 8 months, Tekken 2. Two years later, Kazuya hosts a second tournament and the seemingly indestructible Heihachi makes his return. Kazuya has become possessed by the devil and is using the Zaibatsu for various illegal activities. Heihachi wins the tournament and defeats Devil Kazuya, dropping his body into a volcano to end him for good. Shortly before this, a woman named Jun Kazuma has an encounter with Kazuya, resulting in a son named Jin. The Kazumas have a special holy power that is never explained, nor is it clear how and why Jun slept with Kazuya, with different interpretations ranging from love to mind control to standard rape. While the Tekken team worked on the next instalment, another team at Namco developed a weapon-based fighting game in 95 named Soul Edge, later rebranded as Soul Blade because Tim Langdell is a cock. The game is set in 1583, with warriors from all over the world seeking the legendary sword, the initially titular Soul Edge. The sword possesses whoever wields it, currently the dread pirate Cervantes. At the end of the story, the mercenary Siegfried Storfen obtains the sword and becomes its puppet, the Azure Knight, Nightmare. Well, he was Azure in the sequel. Before the two IPs could become connected, Tekken 3 released in 97. This game takes place 19 years after the previous entry. Heihachi's forces uncover an ancient warrior named Ogre who travels the world, defeating various fighters, including June, who sends Jin to find his grandfather before she goes missing. Four years later, the 73-year-old Heihachi hopes to use Ogre's blood to find the key to immortality. He arranges another tournament, which Jin wins by killing Ogre. He is shot dead by Heihachi, only to revive as Devil Jin and flee. I'll discuss this more in a minute. The following year, Soul Calibur was released and finally connected the two series. The plot sees Nightmare terrorising Europe three years after Blade, until a group of Asian fighters arrive with the Holy Sword Soul Calibur, created to destroy Soul Edge centuries prior and defeat him. One of the other new fighters is Yoshimitsu, a ninja of the massacred Manji clan who wields a sword he names after himself. Tekken also has a Yoshimitsu who is one of only three characters to appear in every entry. That version takes his name from the sword and leads the Manji clan in the present. It's never been officially stated that they exist in the same universe to my knowledge, but with all the nods and references, it's hard not to see it that way. There was one last game in the 20th century, Tekken Tag Tournament from July 99. The game brings back the cast of Tekken 3 and most of the Tekken 2 characters that didn't return. It was intended to have a story about June's possessed sister, but for whatever reason it was dropped. 2001's Tekken 4, however, does have a story, picking up two years after Tekken 3. It turns out Kazuya was restored by the Zaibatsu's rival, G Corporation, and is back for revenge. Heihachi hosts another tournament to lure Kazuya and Jin out so we can steal their devil gene, a new explanation for their devil power while kinda maintaining the whole deal with the devil thing. And no, even three games after introducing the gene, it's still not been properly explained. Heihachi beats Kazuya in the final, Kazuya takes full control of his devil form, and Jin defeats both but doesn't kill them because he sees a vision of his mother. 2002 Soul Calibur 2 has the same basic plot as 1 but set 4 years later and with Nightmare lacking his group of allies. Newcomer Raphael defeats Nightmare and releases Siegfried from Soul Edge's hold. The game also popularised guest fighters with the version exclusive Link, Spawn and Heihachi, the latter further suggesting that the two series have a connection. Tekken 5 released in 2004, taking place 2 months after the previous game. After Jin's departure in 4, G Corporation attempts to assassinate Kazuya and Heihachi with exploding jack robots. Kazuya escapes while Heihachi is presumed dead. The explosion destroys a Mishima-owned temple under which Heihachi had imprisoned his father, Jinpachi, who has his own demon possessing him. Jinpachi assumes control of the Zaibatsu and hosts a fifth tournament with Zaibatsu ownership on the line to find someone who can kill him. Jin kills his great-grandfather and takes control of the company. 
In February 2005, as was customary for fighting games of the time, Tekken received an action-adventure spin-off, Death by Degrees, starring series mainstay Nina Williams. As is also customary, it's an ambiguously canonical prequel taking place before the first game and messing up some of the backstory. Hear the fate of Nina and Anna's father. I'm going to count it since the main events of the game don't contradict anything from the main series, only the flashbacks that don't relate to the main plot at all. The game is controlled by moving the right stick in a direction to make Nina attack in that direction and it kinda doesn't work at all but it gives us our title. Eight months later, Soul Calibur 3 released, foregoing the standard arcade release and going straight to PS2, a standard the series would maintain from here on in. Following another fighting game trend of the time, this game is set in the same year as 2. Newcomer Zaslamel is seeking to obtain Soul Calibur and Soul Edge from the now free Siegfried so that he can remove his own reincarnation curse. He revives Nightmare as its own separate person so it can clash with Siegfried, nearly killing him as it reclaims Soul Edge. Since the Wii was too weak to handle the next main installment, November 2007 gave the Wii its own title, Soul Calibur Legends, an action spin-off in the vein of Death by Degrees set a year after Soul Blade. As I discussed in a previous episode, the plot is massively contradictory from a major conflict no one ever talks about later, to Siegfried learning that both swords are evil and rejecting Edge only to then go back and reclaim it later, to Ivy learning Soul Edge is evil but still joining up with Nightmare in Soul Calibur 1. It really just does not fit. I can accept Death by Degrees because the contradictions only affect the motivations of two supporting characters during Tekken 2. Legends is impossible to reconcile with the goals and motivations of the cast for the rest of the series, so I cannot accept it as canon. Six days later we got Tekken 6, which sees Kazuya take control of G Corporation for use against Jin Zaibatsu, which is waging war with the world for some reason. Most of the other characters' plots revolve around this conflict, including two separate apocalyptic predictions. So naturally, when the enhanced version, Bloodline Rebellion, released on consoles in 2009 and added a story mode, it focused on a new character right out of a bad fanfic. Lars beats every other fighter on the roster, has amnesia and DBZ her, is a high-ranking member of the Tekken Force and even the illegitimate son of Heihachi, and the only person other than Nina to learn of Jin's true motive for waging this war, creating enough suffering throughout the world to revive a creature named Azazel so he could kill it because it has some unexplained link to the devil gene. The actual conflict the other story set up is completely superfluous as Kazuya just fucking leaves after Lars beats him in the final room before Jin. Jin seemingly dies killing his Azel but is found in the desert in the Stinger. In case you can't tell, this is the point where Tekken's story turned to absolute dog shit. 2008 Soul Calibur 4, while underwhelming and inconclusive for what seemed like the climactic chapter, was at least not an insulting waste of time like Tekken 6 and 7. Siegfried is saved by Soul Calibur, encasing him in crystalline armour to keep him alive as he heads for a mysterious tower to face off with Nightmare in its penultimate form. A form that is super cool, but not as cool as its non-canon ultimate form, which is pure Nightmare fuel. At the same time, Algol, the previously established hero king who created Soul Calibur in the distant past, returns for for reasons and acts as the game's third final boss. 4 is basically the third act of 3's story picking up right where that game left off. And I do have to ask, why doesn't Soul Calibur IV put any focus on Ivy? Yeah, fuck you too. The 2009 PSP port, Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, does have a plot. It involves Cassandra and Hilda going on a quest around the time of Fall, which definitely didn't happen and characterizations are decidedly more comedic, so it doesn't count. While the Tekken team worked on Tag 2 and some pointless spin-offs no one cared about, Project Soul released Soul Calibur 5 in 2012. The game is a Tekken 3 style new generation deal set in 1607, 17 years after the last three games. As is the style, half the Roster got cut including fan favourites Sofitia, Cassandra and Taki, while irrelevant characters like Cervantes and Mitsurugi get to stick around despite having not affected the plot since SC1, if at all, and still refusing to do anything now. I plan to cover this more in the future. The new lead is the late Sofitia's son, Patroclus, who is searching for his missing sister, Pyrrha, both of whom are utterly unlikable. Pyrrha becomes a new host of Soul Edge, but is killed by a Soul Calibur wielding Patroclus before he goes back in time to not kill her and instead defeats Soul Calibur's evil spirit, Elysium, and the two siblings then destroy the two swords, ending the series on a worse note than the inconclusive 4 would have done. Supposedly, the story mode was cut down significantly due to the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, but scaled back or not, there is no excuse for the story turning out as horribly as it did. 
And also, fuck you Namco for killing off the best character off screen. 2014 then gave us the mobile spin-off Soul Calibur Unbreakable Soul, whose story, from what I know of it, doesn't openly contradict anything from the core series, plus it makes a certain plot point not shit, so I'm counting it. Because the Project Soul writers were having an off day that lasted half a decade, they decided Sophitia's sister Cassandra should just disappear into a void at the end of 4 and never be seen again. Someone evidently went and slapped them all across the face afterwards because this game is about her adventures with Edgemaster between parallel universes in the Astral Chaos, so this goes between 4 and 5. Tekken 7 would eventually release in 2015, though Namco would continue their annoying trend of releasing an updated arcade port later, and only then make a console port, finally releasing with an actual plot in 2017. Picking up sometime after 6, seemingly right after, given Jin's situation, the story delves into the backstory of Heihachi and Kazuya, finally revealing that the Devil Jean is not a Mishima thing, but is from Kazuya's mother Kazumi, whom Heihachi killed shortly before the cliff incident. Kazumi's plot makes absolutely zero sense sense and canonically involves Akuma from Street Fighter and it's fucking trash, so I'll just leave that for the eventual critique or wasted potential on the game. The important thing is that, after the game's poor attempt to make Heihachi sympathetic, he and Kazuya have their final battle in a volcano, which Heihachi loses, and is then thrown into the lava. Jin is now awakened from his coma and preparing to face off with Kazuya in Tekken 8, making 7 feel like a ground zeroes we had to wait almost a decade for. Good job. And before you say, no, Akuma's presence does not make Tekken part of the Street Fighter shared universe, nor does it make Street Fighter Cross Tekken canonical to either series. There is simply a new incarnation of Akuma who is native to the Tekken universe. That's it. Tekken 7 also received a tie-in comic by Titan Comics, but it doesn't gel with Seven's story at all and half the characters die horribly. Yeah, the ones that get possessed by Angel come back, but King doesn't. So it actually branches off after the previous installment, similar to the tie-in manga 6, had and the CGI movie Blood Vengeance. But amidst the edgy lines about Panda ripping people's faces off, the comic did give us this little gem. I fucking concur. Finally, this brings us to today's release, Soul Calibur 6, a reboot of the Soul franchise returning to the events of Soul Calibur 1. As of right now, it's unclear whether it's just an alternate history branching off after Soul Blade, or if there's some time travel shenanigans going on a la MK2011. Hell, it could be a sequel to Legends for all we know. So for now, we'll assume it's the former and focus on the original timeline. So when exactly is Tekken set? Richard Williams' grave in Tekken 2 and 3 does state his date of death which originally occurred between 1 and 2, but being pre-rendered in the SD era, it's too blurry to make out. The only other piece of evidence would be the Tekken 4 instruction manual, which places the Tekken Force raid on G Corporation on Friday the 25th of December. The closest year to the game's 2001 release, where Christmas Day fell on a Friday, would be 1998, and the next would be 2009. With nothing else to use as a basis, I'll say that Tekken 4 is set in 2009. Remove two years for Tekken 3, 2007, 19 years for Tekken 2, 1988, and two more for Tekken 1, 1986. No one apparently ages between 4 and 7, so they're all still in 2009. Death by Degrees doesn't have a solid placement, so we'll just say it's the same year as 1 for the sake of simplicity. And now we have our classic timeline. Huge thanks to my buddies Drake and the Shelfables for their help in verifying that Tekken 4 info. Hopefully Soul Calibur 6's story will be amazing and give me enough material to make a follow up in the near future. Probably not though, this is a Namco Bandai fighter after all. So without further ado, the Soul Calibur slash Tekken timeline goes a little something like this. Ancient past. The hero king Algol uses the sword Soul Edge to end a period of war. His son, Arcturus, takes the sword and becomes possessed. Algol is forced to kill his son and sacrifices his own life to create Soul Calibur to destroy Soul Edge. 6th of February, 1568. Siegfried Stolfen is born to Frederick and Margaret Stolfen. 1583. Soul Edge's current host, Cervantes de Leon, is defeated by Sophitia Alexandra and the ninja Taki. Soul Edge is taken by Siegfried and the sword possesses him, transforming him into Nightmare and releasing the evil seed. 1586. Nightmare enacts a reign of terror across Europe. 
Keelik, Chai Shanghua and Maxi assault Nightmare Stronghold and defeat him with Soul Calibur. Siegfried is temporarily freed from Soul Edge's hold. 1590. Soul Edge regains control of Siegfried until he is defeated by Raphael Sorel. Siegfried attempts to destroy Soul Edge with Soul Calibur, creating the Soul Embrace. Zaslamel revives Nightmare as a new entity to obtain Soul Edge for him. Siegfried and Nightmare clash, resulting in Siegfried's near death and Nightmare reclaiming Soul Edge. Nightmare servants Tira abducts Sophitia's daughter, Pyrrha. The Tower of Remembrance rises from the Earth, and Siegfried and Nightmare have their final clash there, ending with Nightmare's death and Soul Edge being shattered. Cassandra Alexandra becomes trapped in Astral Chaos, where she teams up with Edgemaster to travel the Void. 1607. Pyrrha becomes the host of the newly restored Soul Edge, but her brother Patroclus defeats her with Soul Calibur. The two siblings destroy the two blades, ending their threat for good. 1936. Heihachi Mishima is born to Jinpachi Mishima. 1961. Kazuya Mishima is born to Heihachi and Kazumi Mishima. 1965. Kazumi attempts to assassinate Heihachi but is killed in self-defense. Kazuya attempts to seek revenge but is defeated and thrown off a cliff. He makes a deal with the devil to obtain power. Heihachi then seals Jinpachi beneath the Honmaru Temple. 1986. Nina Williams is hired by MI6 and the CIA to infiltrate the criminal organization Cometa. Nina defeats the group's leaders and escapes as their ship explodes. Heihachi announces the first King of Iron Fist tournament. Kazuya enters and faces Heihachi in the final. Kazuya throws Heihachi off the same cliff he had been and takes control of the Mishima Zaibatsu. 1988. Kazuya, now possessed by the devil, hosts the second Iron Fist tournament. He has an encounter with Jun Kazuma, resulting in her becoming pregnant. Heihachi wins the tournament and defeats Devil Kazuya. He drops Kazuya into a volcano, killing him, but his remains are quickly recovered and revived by G Corporation. Nine months later, Jin Kazuma is born. 2003. The Tekken Force uncovers an ancient warrior named Ogre who travels the world challenging powerful fighters. He attacks Jun who disappears, sending Jin to find Heihachi. 2007. Heihachi hosts the third tournament to acquire Ogre's blood. Jin emerges victorious and is shot dead by Heihachi. Jin awakens his devil Jean and escapes. 25th of December 2008. During a Tekken Force raid on G Corporation to reclaim Kazuya's remains, Heihachi learns of Kazuya's revival. 2009. Heihachi hosts the fourth tournament to draw Kazuya and Jin into the open. Heihachi wins the tournament, but Kazuya acquires control of his devil powers and both are defeated by Jin. G Corporation attempts to assassinate Kazuya and Heihachi with Jack 4 robots, but Kazuya escapes and Heihachi is presumed dead. The ensuing explosion awakens the now possessed Jinpachi, who takes control of the Zaibatsu. Two months later, Jinpachi hosts the fifth tournament to find a warrior that can kill him before he is fully consumed. Jin defeats and kills Jinpachi, taking control the Zaibatsu himself. He then learns of Azazel, an ancient creature related to the Devil Gene. He uses the Zaibatsu to wage global war to awaken Azazel so he can kill it. Kazuya takes control of G Corporation for use against Jin. Jin's plan succeeds, but he disappears and is presumed dead. Heihachi resurfaces to reclaim the Zaibatsu. He battles Kazuya and is finally killed. Jin resurfaces to gather allies for the inevitable final battle with his father. Fighting game stories can be good, you just need someone who can tap into the great characters and their relationships in a way that I don't think anyone currently writing fighting games does. And before any Neanderthals chime in with that old adage, story doesn't matter in a fighting game, you either sat through this video and are still dumb enough to believe that after everything I've just shown, or you didn't watch the video and simply came here to say that. The rest of you, meanwhile, can now easily identify these idiots and laugh at them. Good day. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you.